get going. All right, and good morning and welcome back. It is May the 7th, 2020, and this is our first of two May calls. We are going to be talking today about conflict in the remote space, and we're lucky to have our 12th episode special guest, Gail Uday, with us, and she is here to to spark some conversation, right? We want to have a dialogue this morning about conflict in the remote space. Always pleased to be here with my co-host, Michelle Mullins, who always brings her heart and soul to this work. So over to you, Michelle. Let's get you to say some opening remarks as we get going with today's call. Yeah, I'm just uh, sipping on my coffee, waking up to the day and considering the birds, they usually start chirping right about now. So I'm trying to tune in, listen to them, um, and just super excited about our guest that's joining us this morning. Her episode was just released yesterday, all about conflict is for the birds. So and I know we have some bird lovers on the line with us today, so it should be fun. So with that, let's meet Gail. Gail, would you like to give just a quick high level overview of why we keep saying birds? You are the author of a book entitled... Conflict is for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> and so tell us, you know, two or three sentences. You've been working in this field of conflict for a long time. Tell us, tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and, and what your focus is in business. Okay, so so I'm I'm an executive coach and uh, a, a trainer. That that's my uh, education, and that's where, and and coaching is my background. Uh, that's the way I come into uh, the work with conflict, um, and uh, I work with my husband. We are the principals of the Center for Conflict Resolution International, that focuses particularly on workplace conflict and sometimes that's a remote workplace so remote or uh, in person where there's conflict we go in and 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 try to resolve and deal with issues and help organizations move forward love it and it was so great to have gail join us before the pandemic started and, I, and michelle has put a little like like a, a little corollary on this week's episode because you have to take it in light of all the changes that have happened. So welcome back. We've got a lot planned for you in our half an hour. There's still a lot on the go and I'm sure your work is continuing to evolve like ours is. Earlier this week I did a separate call for effective virtual conversations and plan do track around mantras around virtual work programs and learning. Most programming these days has shifted very quickly into the remote space. So how do we have memorable conversations in an era where our bad meeting etiquette has literally come from the in-person realm to the virtual space? So for people who are interested in that, head on over to my YouTube channel at Effective Group Coach, and you'll see the mantras around virtual work, et cetera. But we have something more fun. So over to you, Michelle, to facilitate our first warm-up exercise for those that are here live and listening today. Yes, yeah, so we thought we, since birds are on the brain, right, we thought that we would just go around the virtual table and share what's your favorite bird. You can either pick out a bird that you see on the screen or just a bird that you may see out your window or carry in your heart, but what is your favorite bird? Jen, what's your favorite bird? So I, I, there's a lot of my favorite birds here. I'm going to my years in the tropics, but I'm actually going to go to the owl because my son and I have um, a very special memory when he was like, you know, two years old and he was about the height of my knee. He's now about six feet tall, almost a foot taller than <laughs> me, but birds like owls are our thing. We have some owls at the cottage where we usually are every summer. And so it's a bit of a, a mother son, like, wisdom thing. So I think today I'm going to grab some wisdom with the owl. Nice. I love that. Wisdom is always good, especially nowadays, right? Absolutely. <laughs> How about you, Gail? What is your favorite bird? Well, I, <laughs> as we were saying, I've written the book, uh, Conflict is for the Birds, but I'm not going to take one of my conflict birds as my favorite. <laughs> um, uh, then we'll talk about those later. But uh, but actually, I would say my favorite bird is a cardinal. And uh, we have, uh, we moved uh, to Ottawa, here where I live, 20 years ago. 
And the first thing that I noticed in our backyard is that we had a family of cardinals. And ever since then, every summer they come back, we always see them. I didn't know at the time, and somebody's told me since then, that seeing a cardinal is always uh, a visit from a loved one who has passed away. And uh, whether that is uh, true, whether you believe that or not, the very fact that someone told me that means that every time I see a cardinal, I think of those loved ones that have passed and, and, mm. and it just brings that special, special feeling to my heart. So I love seeing cardinals. I love the fact that I have a family in my backyard and they're my favorite. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah, so much spiritual meaning behind the cardinal. I love it. Yes. Yeah. And North Carolina state bird here. So yeah. it's the cardinal. So I love that. That's great. Oh, so I'd love to hear some more voices. How about anyone else that's listening with us today? What's your favorite bird? Hey, Michelle, it's Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. So I, I am a huge bird lover. I'm always noticing the birds. So it's, it's kind of like trying to pick your favorite child. Um, but um, I do, I'm, I guess I'm going to say the bluebird um, because they're just such a, a gorgeous color and they always catch my eye, you know, here they're like that blue, sometimes almost purplish in color. And um, they're just kind of a delight. They represent to me like fun. And um, there's tons of them in my backyard right now. So um, yeah, just the bluebird. Oh, I love it. I love it. It makes me think of a song too, right? The yes. Always carry a song and that, that speaks so much about you too. So I love that. Yes. So let's continue around the virtual table. Who else would like to share their favorite bird? Good morning, Michelle. This is Pat. And, Good morning. And I am a bird lover. And so yes. I have many birds. And so in my backyard, my favorite birds are, of course, the cardinals. Um, it's because they are a family. And wherever you see one, you see the other. Or else you'll see one and they'll be calling the other to, to the either male or female, to their mate. So that's just like wonderful. Uh, as far as a pet, my favorite is a cockatiel. Mm -hmm. I used to always have cockatiels and they were just, just wonderful um, interpersonal. They, they would just be with you and they would, could be your friend and you could just talk with them. Um, and they were part of the family. And then this uh, last summer, I had the privilege of going to Alaska and I was able to see eagles soar. And that was one of my things in my bucket list. And so I would find the eagle nest and kind of see what I could find about them. And, and it was such an adventure. And, and I just really just loved trying to find eagles wherever I went. Wow, I love that. I'm hearing fellowship, like the birds, the fellowship and birds um, that they bring to your life. So that's absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. Love it. And okay. Melissa, I see you're on the line. You're in the tropics there. So do, do you have a different bird? What, what is your bird? Sure. Good morning. Bright and early here, 5 a.m. Good morning, Jennifer, as well. Hello. Welcome, Melissa. Pura Vida. You, Pura Vida. <laughs> and uh, Gail, I love your, your examples of birds here and, and where we're going with that. But yeah, I, I do appreciate the birds more than ever. Um, we see them in, in our tree where we are in Costa Rica. We see the toucan early in the morning and around four o'clock, but uh, I mean, they really defy gravity with their big, big beaks that, uh, you know, just the fact that they can fly and they're special, but truly my uh, favorite bird, which isn't just tropical, I believe, um, is the hummingbird. Uh, I have just always been so attracted to these tiny little birds. They're just, you know, little round bodies and then wings. And I don't know exactly uh, if it's a thousand or 10,000 uh, times per um, minute <laughs> or second that their wings go, but it's, it's, um, it's extremely fast and if you watch them they're just precious you know each one has a, a slightly different color and um, there's many many species here so and of course we can attract them with our flowers so we can watch them really close 
<laughs> and, uh, and so that's I even better. That. That's so more at eye level. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned actually one of the birds that Gail talks about. The hummingbird is yeah. one of them. So that'll be so much fun. And I see one more iPhone. Don't see a name, but do you have a favorite bird before we move forward? Oh, don't hear. Well, please join us as we move forward. Where are we going, Jen? We are going to go on to just a reminder that this quarter we're talking all about experimentation. So just to interface, you know, I think the topic of conflict, we all, as we'll hear from Gail and in our conversation, we may have a bit of a default mode around conflict and how we like to approach it. In the spirit of experimentation this month and this quarter, it might be interesting to try something new and see how we can continue to pivot. And that is the context we're in at the moment. So maybe there's a need for pivoting how we approach conflict, especially if we're not able to sit down face to face or see everyone every day. So with that, today's topic is conflict. And just we want to spark some conversation. Like last month, we talked about being connected. But today, we really want to talk a little bit about conflict in the remote space. So I'm going to put our birds back with these bright, bright birds like over to you, Gail, like what's what's a couple of things that you'd like to share with us in maybe four or five minutes around your work, your writing, this notion of why we really zoomed into like birds. Tell us a little bit about it. Over yeah. Here. yeah, so so uh, one of the things that that that's most critical when we deal with conflict at any time, and, and I'm talking whether we're talking about workplace issues uh, or whether we're talking about dealing with our spouse or our kids or whoever it is in our lives that we're that we experience some conflict with that so much of our ability to navigate through that conflict has to do with our approach and we have that sort of default approach it's something we've learned along the way either we learned it from our parents or, or whatever um it, other other uh people uh, and the way they've done things and we've seen it and we've, we've responded to it and so we react that way and if we're not thinking about it we'll go to that default mode all the time so one of the things that 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 i do in my work is help people take that from from the subconscious and just reacting to conflict and actually seeing what it is that they're doing and whether that's working or not working in that particular situation and and so we ended up in our in our book talking about conflict and how we approach conflict and using five birds as the metaphor for how we approach conflict um, we pick birds because there's no uh, there's no positive negative connotations because each style has its value and we don't want anybody feeling like well that's not a good style at all it's just not always a good style and it's not always valuable so our five birds are the woodpecker the owl the hummingbird the parakeet and the ostrich and each of us is one of those birds on a pretty regular basis uh, and and just in a nutshell the woodpecker is the one who's going to hammer away at things and get what they want the parakeet is the one that's going to chirp friendly at you and always look like they're happy whether they are or not. The owl is the one that's going to talk and talk and work through things slowly but surely. The ostrich is the one who's going to bury their head in the sand and pretend they didn't see anything. And the hummingbird, uh, like Melissa described so well is moving so fast and trying to find a solution so quick that, 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 that they just want to get to the other end of that conflict and find some negotiated fix. So that's, that's a really brief high level nutshell of those five styles. But to your point, Jennifer, of experimentation, we can also learn each of those styles and learn the value of them in different conflict situations. It's just such a rich metaphor that goes on and on and on and, and is a great way for people to start looking at how they're dealing with conflict and, and, and whether that approach is working for them 
in that particular context or not. So fantastic. So what do you think is important for us to consider as we have shifted into this current reality of conflict in the remote space? I know we had a conversation about this a few months ago. And, and what are you noticing about how conflict is changing in this space, scale? Well, it's, it's interesting, you know, um, what a lot of my work since 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 we've been uh, forced to work remotely uh, with with you know so many places is that for for the folks that aren't used to working in the remote space um, it's really heightened and I and I think I spoke to this in the podcast but I've seen this in real time over the last month and a half is it it, it sort of allowed the two extremes. To, to, to really um, bubble up. So if you tend to be more of an avoider and more of an ostrich, I would say, a person who doesn't like conflict, working in the remote space, uh, especially if you're relatively new to it, has allowed people to just put aside the conflict and put it in the back burner and pretend it's not there. Uh, so I've had a lot of my clients say, well, everything's good because I don't have to see them every day anymore. And I don't have to, you know, I, I, the, the, they're not in my peripheral vision all the time. And so long as they're not there, I don't have to deal with it. Um, I would contend that they still have to deal with it because that conflict hasn't gone away. Uh, but that's their tendency. The other extreme that I've seen a lot of is that somehow because we're in this remote space and yes i'm talking to you and it's live and i see your picture on on uh, my zoom screen and all of that but it's funny how that that disengagement also allows me sometimes to say things i wouldn't normally say to your face and and so so some of the more woodpeckerish behavior has started to bubble up a little bit more as well. And so it's been really interesting to watch kind of those two extremes show up more vividly over the last little while than I've seen them before. Oh, wow. That's, that's so, so insightful. And, you know, I always say things get magnified and I can just imagine, yeah, like the, the woodpeckerish behavior. Yeah. We may go, we may be a little bit more bold if we weren't before. And again, like conflict, is, I, I recall you sharing with us, you know, like conflict is such an important part of our work. It's not always negative. It's not something we, want, we necessarily want to shy away from. But I know one of your key messages was we want to use the right strategy in the right moment to have those important conversations to keep relationships moving and therefore results achieved. So what, what do you think is an important question for us to have some dialogue around this morning? Is it helping us think about our styles or do you think it's something else, Gail? Not to put you on the spot, but what do you think is an important question for us to spend a few minutes on? Well, I, 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 think, there's, I think there's two important questions uh, when, when it comes to dealing with conflict or, or choosing not to deal with it. Either way, is that, that I think that the, the two important things that people need to ask the question is, one is, what's, what's my approach? Like, it, you know, what is the way that I'm dealing with this and how effective is this? But together with that, the second question is really, what is this conflict all about? And, and when you ask that just on a surface level, um, it's really easy to say, oh, well, it's just because you know, so-and-so is being stubborn or, you know, it, it, you very quickly deflect and it's something that the other person did. But I'm asking, why is it a conflict for you? What's the problem around this for you? Uh, you know, and, and, and I'll, you know, when you, when you start looking at it that way, is it something that um, is going against my personal values? Is, is this something that, you know, is something that is just this irritant that, that, you know, I experience over and over and over again? Is it my frustration over lack of understanding or lack of being heard? Uh, you know, why is this a conflict for me? And when I understand why is it a conflict for me, and then I look at how am I approaching that conflict, 
then I can really answer the question, is that style working for me? Great. So wonderful. Well, what a big share. So again, we could, we could spend a whole hour on this. Sadly, we, we have about five minutes. <laughs> now, like, what's coming up for you? Is there a question you think we should be talking about? Or is it simply just going around and checking in and seeing what, you know, seeing what people are resonating with? Because I, I still love these notion of like the different types of birds. It really is something I can get my head around. But what about you, Michelle? What are you connecting in with? I'm connecting it with the podcast episode where, um, Gail, you mentioned that it's often connected to our wants, needs, and expectations too. Mm -hmm. So with that values and different things and conflict can actually be the bridge of communication and the gateway to intimacy in a relationship. So I love also the invitation to embrace conflict, but I would love like one of the things about these community calls is this is a dialogue with our listeners. So I would love to bring their voices in and just go around the virtual table. What are you hearing um, from our conversation today? Or maybe what questions do you have with Gail since she's here with us? Who would like to share or, or ask we invite you into the dialogue hey michelle um, it's jennifer grody and um you know i just as she's talking I, I don't know about the other listeners but you know of course um situations are coming to mind whether it's with my husband or past you know and i think just those are such powerful questions so um yeah thank you for bringing them um, but just even asking that question of yourself, what is my approach is so eye opening um, mm -hmm. because it, you know, it just, the, the fact that, you know, acknowledging that I do have an approach, right. You know, like, I, it's like, oh yeah, I do. And then you start thinking about the people in your life, um, those closest to you and situations maybe that they've brought to you or for me, even my clients. And it's like, oh yeah, there's that approach and that approach. So it's a really powerful framework for me just to acknowledge that we do have an approach and then like that next question how effective is it um so thank you thanks jennifer yeah hi michelle hi melissa <laughs> i just wanted to say this is such a a great visual exercise i'm i'm not as visual but i um can really relate to all of these birds now and what it does is it you know, as we ask the question, as, as Jennifer Grody said, um, you know, which, how am I acting? Because I do have a conflict style, but that at that point, you know, to, to pause and then choose what would work in this situation. And the fact that, you know, I can visualize now a bird, whether it's an owl that's talking through it or a, um, you know, woodpecker that's just going at it to get it done because it's something, maybe I'm having a conflict with myself and getting something I don't like done that I have to do now. Or, um, you know, the parakeet, which, which is um, the pleasant bird, <laughs> you know, always nice to everybody. So I just, I really like that. It's, um, it's a fun way to maybe, maybe a way to give us courage and say, you know, which bird am I going to be today in this situation? Oh, I love that, Melissa. Thank you for that. I'm, I, I'm going to quote you on that because I say that all the time, that it's a, it's a, a fun way to deal with a difficult topic. And, uh, and so that's great. I, I'm glad that that resonated for you. Oh, thank you. And this is Pat. And Melissa, I, I like what you said. It was wonderful that, um, that you could relate with this with conflict with self, like if it was something you didn't want to get done, but you had to get done and you're, you're doing that and, and you're looking at these different birds, because sometimes we're so set in our ways and we, we have one conflict style. And if we can learn the value of each and which one would be most effective in what situation, I thought that was very valuable. And, and thank you, Gail. <laughs> Thanks. Mm, you can just hear, right, Jen? I know where you're going, probably. Just the incredible value that Gail's bringing to the world right now and how much it's needed um, and how it can just kind of diffuse or address that conflict that may be happening. Yeah, so thank so you. We, we do want to, like, encourage you, if you've been inspired by today's topic, learn more about this, obviously. Gail, I think your book is on Amazon. Is it available at Amazon or where can people get a copy? 
It, it, it is, um, and uh, I think you've got you've got my contact info connected to to the um, uh, to the podcast as well, and people can contact me directly. Uh, I can say with this uh, stay at home time, we're actually re looking at our book and looking at whether we're putting a third edition out or not. So that's mm -hmm. uh, that's in the works right now. Very neat. And maybe some of these ideas might show up in a little section on remote because you know, here's what we're seeing, right? Practically and tactically, conflict in the remote space used to be a, a nice to talk about issue, but now it's, it's at the point where we have to address this. We have to spark the conversation. And to what we've heard this morning, this is such a just such a, a visual and a lighter approach, right? Conflict is not bad, but for many of us, we may feel that it is, it is a bad thing because of how we've been socialized. So if we are working across location, culture, geography, even that can magnify our approaches to conflict as well. So a big thank you and please make sure that you are listening in. Gail, your website, if you could just give us your website address so that everyone can notice that, what is it? Okay, so, so our business website address, and that's where you can see information about our book as well, is ccrinternational.com. All right, ccrinternational.com. So, got some ideas, got more importantly, I think, questions for approaching conflict in the remote space. We really want to encourage you, like the ducks and the geese, what works well for you in this next few weeks as we go forward? We've just released uh, Gail's episode yesterday, and of course there is a download that comes from um, some of my writing around four keys to navigating conflict. I think you'll find it fits in really well, and Michelle nicely massaged those. So think about what's gonna benefit you. We also are moving just through week 18 of this year's 52 week series over at the Remote Pathways blog. And the topic this week is productivity and really like to conflict. If we're not addressing conflict, it's going to get in the way of our results mm -hmm. at some point. It may, you know, literally mushroom it and mean that that's all we deal with for a few weeks and probably not that effectively because it's much harder when you're doing this in the remote space or it may be a lubricator, right? Like conflict is, is part of the seeds of innovation, I do believe. So Absolutely. a big thank you. You know, as we, as we go to wrap, Michelle, maybe you want to say a little bit about this week's Conversation Sparker. What's this week's Conversation Sparker? Because Michelle chose this one out of our <laughs> list. My buff needs, and I love this one because, you know, it thinks about someone else besides yourself, right? First is like, who is my boss? And am I tuning in? Because they're going through this change as well. So what does my boss need? How can I participate in on the team? But then if you're self-employed, guess what? You are the boss. <laughs> so you need to ask yourself that question. What does my boss need? Get in touch, as Jennifer Grody has shared with me. Get in touch with your heart. Listen in, tune in in the morning. Really try to clarify what those needs are. Fantastic. And that's about it. So uh, our quote of the week is give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the axe. Conflict is part of that. How do we get the axe sharpened? It's Abraham Lincoln, of course. And a big, big, big thank you to you, Gail, for joining us this morning. The good news is we're back in two weeks. So we're continuing with these semi-month, or I guess bi-weekly calls. We'll be doing a call two weeks today on a little bit later. So for those of you that are like getting up before the crack of dawn, our call two weeks today, Thursday morning, will be at 7.30. And we'll keep moving into some topics. But big thank you. Over to you, Gail. What did you enjoy about being here in the community with us this morning? I, I, I have to say, you know, it's for me at 7 a.m., it's a little early in the morning for me. I'm not a great morning person, but what energy and what enthusiasm in this space uh, has just woken me up and energized me and got me ready for the day. Um, I, I, I think I told you, you folks that I could talk about this for hours and, and I just, I, I'm, I'm so glad that, that this has resonated with, with folks and, and giving you a little bit of, of things to think about. And I love the question, what does your boss need? Because that also 
gives us that opportunity to put us in, in somebody else's shoes for a minute, which is all part of dealing with conflict too. So I love it. Thank you for, thank you for the invite. It's been great to be here with you. So be sure to listen in. This is definitely an episode you don't want to miss. It's episode 12 and it is conflict in the remote space. And with that, Michelle, you get final words as always, as we go to wrap up. Yeah, just thank you everyone for joining us at our virtual round table. Um, it's been great to hear your voice and have a conversation around conflict and birds. And we just hope that you fly through your day with joy today. So thank you for being here with us. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Have a day. See you Thank soon. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks again, Jill, for joining us. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm going to stop our recording and this will be live over at the YouTube channel.